Tony Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today, I'm going to teach you how to remove and install an ECM on a Mark III as well as replace the chip. So this is actually really easy DIY to do and the chip I'm going to be using is from Reflect Tuning in Greensboro. My dude Ian hooked me up with this tuning chip. Uh, he does a ton of really awesome stuff, wideband O2 conversions, immobilizer deletes, ECM tunes beyond just actually replacing a literal chip. So check him out. I'll put links in the video notes for you guys to check him out. Follow him on Facebook. He's a super nice guy. We even send stuff to him at the dealership. So highly recommend him. All right, the tools that we are going to need are going to be a Phillips head screwdriver, hopefully better quality than this one, a flathead screwdriver. This is a really good quality screwdriver and a T15 Torx bit. You may also need a trim removal tool depending on how good of condition your cowl trim is in. As you'll see, mine is pretty rough, so we didn't need this. Another nice thing to have is VAGCOM. I'm actually gonna show you guys a little tidbit of VAGCOM Wi-Fi with my phone. Um, here's the VAGCOM Wi-Fi with the extension cable. This thing's really awesome. I use it all the time at work. Um, highly recommend it, very cool. I'll be sure to put links in the show notes. This is what it looks like without the extension cable on it. Uh, I live by this extension cable because it is so small, I'd hate to leave it in a customer's car. So I'll put links to the VAGCOM stuff in the show notes. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the GTI and install this chip. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get the ECM out of the vehicle. The ECM on this car is buried underneath the cowl trim. So we're gonna have to go ahead and take the cowl trim off. Now, this car has been through a little bit of a rough time, so it's actually missing the fasteners for the cowl which is not a problem for this job because it's gonna actually make doing this job quite a bit easier. We're gonna start by taking the seal off. We can just lay that right on the engine. Next, we have to move this little slide piece right here. I usually just slide it to the passenger side and then we kind of have to lift up and pull forward and then towards the driver's side to remove this cowl trim. If this trim were in better shape, this seal would be a little bit more intact and not all broken up like that but it's really not that bad for an almost 20 year old car. We'll set our cowl trim to the side. Now you can see here is our ECM. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this next. All right, there's really only a couple of fasteners that hold that ECM bracket into the vehicle. We're gonna grab our 10 millimeter socket and we're gonna take the two bolts out. Our first one is here, just below the wiper blade. keep that to where we won't lose it. And then the second one is right here. This is actually a nut facing the other way. So we're gonna get a box wrench and take that one off. All right, let's go ahead and take this one off. When you're working underneath the cowl, this is a really good opportunity to go ahead and clean all the leaves and nasty business that are piled up in the cowl. Also, if you have a pollen filter, it's a good time to take that out as, and change it as well. All right, I got our two fasteners out. I need to slide my ECM towards the passenger side. And we're gonna pull the wires out of the brack, the wire loom. And just pull the whole entire thing off and out so that we can gain access to the connector. Now, before you disconnect the ECM, make absolutely 100% sure that your ignition switch is turned off. My ignition is definitely off, so we can go ahead and disconnect the ECM and then install our chip. This connector here actually slides out. It's probably going to be a little bit tricky to get out because I'm guessing that most of these haven't been disconnected in a long time. So you can take a screwdriver and just ease the slide just like that to start it. And then usually you can get it by hand. And if you can't get it by hand, like I'm struggling with. Just keep using the screwdriver to slide that connector out. When the connector rocks back a little bit, you wanna push it towards where the slide is and that'll release the connector. There's a little tab at the back of it here that, uh, that has to clear the ECM. So we're gonna set our connector down. We're gonna take our ECM and we're gonna go over to the bench and we're gonna install the chip. All right, we have our ECM at the bench and what we are going to need to do 
is take these four screws out so we can take the case off the ECM. We're gonna take our T15 bit and we're just gonna run these screws out. We're also gonna need our Phillips head screwdriver as well because we're gonna have to take the ECM box off of the bracket that holds the ECM in. All right, so we'll set our four ECM screws to the side. We'll go ahead and take our ECM off of the mounting bracket. I don't generally like to use power tools when I'm working on ECMs. Um, it's probably not that big of an issue. It's just one of my little paranoid things that I don't like to do. All right, we just had to loosen those front two. We're gonna go ahead and set our ECM bracket to the side. We already got our ECM screws out. We'll give it one more final look. And we should be able to pull the ECM box apart fairly easily. If we need to, we can kind of work it apart. Remember, we, there is a seal on this, and we don't want to rupture any seals or anything and allow for water to be intruded into the ECM. All right, we got our ECM apart. We can see right here is the chip that we're going to be replacing. Something that'll work really well to take this chip out is gonna be a small pick. You have to be really careful. We don't wanna to put too much pressure on one side or the other. We don't wanna break anything on this little chip hold down bracket. If we end up breaking the chip, it's not that big of a deal because we're replacing it, but we wanna take a lot of care not to damage anything. I actually found a really tiny nail and that works pretty darn good to just ease this chip out. Take it nice and easy. All right, we got the chip out. We also wanna take note of the install of the chip. There's one corner that has like a little piece of it missing. So we wanna make sure that when we install our new chip, you can see right here, this corner just barely is missing. We wanna make sure that we install that in the right place. If we hold our ECM up, the innermost corner is the one that, that the different corner needs to go on. So like all DIYs, no need to hurry. Make sure we don't have any dirt or debris on the chip or in the bracket that holds the chip in. And make, we go ahead and line it up nice and easy. And we snap the chip down. And that's really all there is to actually installing the chip. I'm going to go ahead and put my factory chip back in the bag and put this in a safe location just in case I ever need it. Now one other good thing to do is take a look at the seal around the ECM and make sure that it's going to be intact when we put this all back together. Like I said, we want to do everything we can to make sure we don't introduce any moisture or water into the ECM at any point. We go ahead and put our box back together. I'm going to put the four T15 screws in first. The order I don't think really matters a whole lot, but I'm gonna take it nice and easy while installing these so that I don't pinch the gasket for the ECM. I'm sure I've already mentioned it, but this chip came from Ian at Reflex Tuning. He's an awesome dude, does a ton of really great stuff as far as tunes, uh, things like ECM chips, instrument cluster fixes, immobilizer deletes, all kinds of really awesome stuff. So I'll be sure to put links to his website and everything in the show notes for you guys to check out because I highly recommend him. Like I said, he's a good dude and we even use him at the dealership on a couple occasions to, uh, to delete immobilizer systems for customers. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our ECM back in the bracket with our Phillips head screws. All right, now that that's all buttoned back up, we're gonna go back to the car and reinstall the ECM. All right, so the cool thing about this repair is installation is basically exactly the same as we did when we removed it. I'm gonna also go ahead and take this opportunity to clean all these leaves and crap out while I have the cowl trim off. So we're gonna start by plugging our ECM in. Got our ECM plugged in nice and easy. We're gonna kind of start it from back here, slide it back up in the location where it came from. Now there is a little plastic tab all the way at the back here that you wanna pay attention to. If you just lean your head down a few inches, you, you'll be able to see it. 
and all you have to do is slide that out. I'm going to put my wires back in the wire loom clips so I don't forget. Go ahead and start my 10 millimeter. Go ahead and start my 10 millimeter nut. So we're going to go ahead and snug everything down and I'm going to vacuum out these leaves and then we're going to put the cowl trim back on. Letting leaves pile up underneath your cowl is really a great way to cause a water leak in your car. So I always recommend when you're doing anything, take the opportunity, take the time to go ahead and get all that crap cleaned out. Time to put our cowl trim back on. It goes on exactly the same way that it came off. It can be a little tricky to get back on. You kind of have to finesse it in there. Sometimes it goes easier than others. We want to take care not to rush putting this back in for a couple of reasons. One, we don't want to break the cowl trim. These are expensive. They're about 80 bucks, I think, because I priced them because I really want to replace these. And we also want to take care that we don't risk breaking the windshield as well. We've got our cowl trim back on. I'm going to go ahead and slide that little locking tab. We're going to put our seal back in. Make sure that's installed properly all the way across the cowl. And as far as mechanical R&R, we're almost done. If our cowl had the fasteners here, 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 and here, we would need to put those back on as well. I'm pretty sure they're plastic Phillip head screws, so you wanna go ahead and get those put back on. All right, so next we're gonna hook up our VAGCOM and just double check and make sure we don't have any fault codes. Let's go ahead and remove the ashtray. Then we're gonna slide this cover to the driver's side. The VAGCOM that I'm going to be using today is actually the Wi-Fi VAGCOM. This is the Hexnet Wi-Fi interface. Go ahead and plug our VAGCOM in. One of the cool things about the Wi-Fi connector is we can actually use an app on our phone to use VAGCOM. Now it's not the full version on the phone, but it does a ton of stuff and it works really, really well. So we're gonna go to select and we're going to select our address word 01, which is engine. We're gonna scroll down to functions. We're gonna to go to fault codes. We're gonna go ahead and clear this out and go back, check faults again. No fault code stored. Now we wanna make sure we go ahead and do a key cycle so that we can double check and make sure our faults are cleared. I know that this worked because if you went back and look at what the fault code said, it said intermittent. Before it was actually a static fault, which means even if you clear the faults, the fault's gonna come right back. When a fault goes to intermittent, that means you can usually clear it out at least one key cycle before the fault comes right back. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the key off. Turn the key back on. See we timed out there. Go to common, go to 01. Go to functions, fault codes, and you'll see we have no fault codes. All right, there you have it. Like I said, that was a really easy DIY. We have our chip installed, the car does start and run, no check engine light. I think this is video four in the series of DIYs of the Mark III. Check out the other videos. I'll put a link to the playlist where you can watch all the videos on the Mark III if you'd like. So if you have any questions or comments, post it in the comment section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I didn't have a beer throughout that whole DIY. I did have a gin and tonic that I poured earlier. It's actually orange juice because I was out of lime juice, but uh, so yeah, I'm going to go get a beer. <laughs>